Racket releases do seem to be done for the year, which gives us a chance to do some good old head-to-head -head comparisons. We start off with a couple of rackets in my favorite category, control rackets, with the Percept 97 versus Blade 98. Hey everybody, it's Luca from Rackets and Runners. Now, the new Percept is a massive breath of fresh air for Yonix's control line. If you watched our top five rackets for control video, you'll know that I didn't include the last V-Core Pro 97 because honestly, I wasn't that big of a fan. They made huge improvements with the release of the Percept, and I don't know about all of you, but I think that's pretty cool because right now, we have a very competitive lineup of control rackets. Now, the Wilson Blade came in at number three in that video, so we are comparing the Percept to what I consider a pretty big heavyweight in this category. You might also be wondering, Luca, why are you comparing it to the Blade and not the Pro Staff? Because initially I wanted to, but there are a few reasons for that. At 310 grams, it falls right in between the two in terms of weight. Now, the tiebreaker could be the head size, but I actually think there are a lot more similarities with the blade. The Pro Staff is a truly classic racket. It has a box beam, a heavy swing weight, and honestly, very little technology that's there to help spin, power, or user friendliness. The Percept is a little box beamy, but overall has a more modern beam design, and it's significantly more technologically advanced, I guess you could say. It has a lower swing weight, a lot more stabilization technology going on inside the layup, and there's a lot more going on with spin that also has a pretty big effect on playability. The blade is similar in that regard, it's more so Wilson's modern experimental control racket, whereas the Pro Staff is really their classic control racket, so the Percept is more blade than Pro Staff. We'll get into how that translates onto the court here in a second, but before we move on, I have to remind you, as usual, that any of the rackets we talk about here, you can check out on our website, racketsandrunners.ca, and please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let me know down in the comments section what you want me to cover next. So two great modern control rackets. I strung them both up with RPM Rough at 52 pounds to try to make this test as standardized and fair as possible. Now, obviously, there are a lot of other great control rackets. I'm thinking of doing some sort of MP or 95 to 98 square inch racket comparison. Let me know if that's something that would interest you. Anyways, I had a lot of fun with this play test. We're going to chat about all the differences here, starting with control, but I did just want to say these are both really, really really good control rackets. If I make it sound like one of these is worse than the other in some regard, keep in mind that's relative to each other and I'll make sure to clarify that when I say it. But yeah, both these rackets are on a pretty high pedestal for me right now. Okay, so we have to start with control because at the end of the day, these are control rackets. So figuring out how they differ in control is kind of key to figuring out which one will work better for you. Again, both very good control rackets, but throughout the course of my playtest, I couldn't help but think that the Percept is just a little bit better for control. And there are a couple reasons for that. For one, the sweet spot itself is just sweeter. This has been one of my main gripes with control rackets over the last several years. Sweet spots have been getting bigger to make the racket more forgiving, but that also takes away from a bit of their control. It's not that the blade sweet spot feels bad, it's just noticeably bigger than the Percepts, which gives it a slightly more sloppy feel, which also takes away from the racket's pinpoint precision. Precision to me is just that feeling of complete connectedness to the ball so that when you make contact, you know exactly where it's going to go. You just get a bit more of that with the Percept. Now reason number two, if the sweet spot is sweeter and the Percept has a more precise feel, that's partially because the blade has a bigger head size and thicker beam, but it's also because the Percept has better feel. I love talking about feel because it's kind of a fugazi concept, but the whole idea behind good feel is that when you're dialed and making proper contact, contact, the racket is sending you positive feedback. Whatever technology is going on inside the blade just makes the racket feel a little bit mushier, so you lose some of that connection to the ball, which adds to that sloppy feel I mentioned earlier. The Percept definitely isn't perfect, but it is more crisp and well-defined, so you get that little extra serotonin hit every time you make good contact. You start craving that good feedback, hating the bad feedback, and that's how to get dialed into a racket 101. Now we're staying on control here for a bit because beyond just saying that the Percept has better control, we also need to talk about how the two control profiles are different. They may have the same stiffness rating, but because the Percept feels so much more crisp, you get that more point and shoot style of control. With the 45 braid technology, dwell time feels longer on the blade, so you get that more flexy style of control where you feel like you can almost catch and throw the ball wherever you wanna place it. It's not as drastic as this example, but think the difference when comparing a classic Pro Staff to a classic Prestige. The Pro Staff is more point and shoot and represents the Percept, and the Prestige is more buttery soft and represents the blade. So if technology is the main culprit for negatively affecting feel, then why the heck are they adding technology to these rackets? Are they just doing it to screw with us? No. Technology is used by all these brands to help modernize their rackets, and in the case of the Blade and the Percept, 
most of their technologies is there to help stabilize the rackets at a lower static and swing weight. Because of their thin and generally soft profile, control rackets have traditionally needed high static and swing weights to be stable enough, and they usually needed customization to get there. Both of these rackets are significantly more stable than you would expect considering their low 310 swing weight, and that's testament to how well the stabilization technology is working in these rackets, but the blade is noticeably more stable in stock form. When you have a bigger sweet spot like this, yeah, it might not be as sweet, but it basically means that you have more of the racket face to hit. You can really feel the technology at work in the blade, making it more stable. I'm not a perfect tennis player, and on the Percept, if I made contact off center, the ball could kind of go flying and it was pretty punishing. On the blade, it almost feels like there's this extra little layer of cushioning that instead of punishing me, the racket's actually trying to help me get the ball where I want it. Of course, you can get to the same level of stability with the Percept, but I only got there once I added seven swing weight points in lead at three and nine, and that's totally fine, but it's also going to make the racket harder to use. There were times at the end of my play test when I was tired, where I was definitely arming at the ball a little bit with the Percept, whereas the blade, I always felt like I could hit with proper technique and it never really got too demanding. Adding weight, especially adding swing weight, will slow these rackets down significantly, which is why all these companies are working so hard on these stabilization technologies, and it's just a little bit more effective on the blade. The blade really is unique in that sense, where it's a control racket and still feels like one. Remember, the feel isn't bad, but it's light and it's playable at that lightweight, which means you don't have to be super advanced with perfect technique to swing it well. With its bigger head size, bigger sweet spot, and thicker beam, the blade also has a higher launch angle than the Percept, which means you get easier access to power and depth. The Percept is a true control racket in that you have to swing full with a lot of racket head speed to generate power. So again, the blade is more forgiving in that regard, kind of a similar story to what it was with stability. So yeah, the feel and precision on the Percept is great, but tennis has evolved to a point where the game is so powerful and so fast that you have to be able to generate power from anywhere on the court, and it's a lot easier to do that with the blade. If your timing is off, or if you're late to the ball, and especially if you're defending, the blade just gives you so much more for free, which can quickly trump any better feel or precision that you get with the Percept. Now again, there's a reason why I'm comparing the Percept to the blade and not the pro staff. This thing is still closer to the blade in terms of ease of use and power, but it is noticeably under. There is one thing I want to say in favor of the Percept for power though. Because it has a more crisp response, you do feel like you get a little bit more pop off the string bed when you really get a hold of the ball. It is easier to generate power on average with the blade, but because it has that mushier feel, it sometimes feels like the racket just doesn't want to give that little extra oomph. It's almost like the ribbit of a dying frog where it's just like bleh, but also not nearly as bad as that example is making it out to be. Okay, spin isn't exactly either of these rackets forte, but if you want to sell to the masses in 2023, you have to at least be competitive in spin, and both these rackets are, and yes, that's again why I'm comparing the Percept to the Blade and not the Pro Staff. In terms of which is more spin friendly, I really tried to come up with a concrete answer, but I honestly can't say, because both of these rackets have things that add to spin, and also things that take away from it. Let's start with the Blade. The bigger features on this racket, so the head size, sweet spot, and thicker beam, all lend themselves to more spin, but it also has more open grommets. This is one of the easiest ways to amplify spin. It means the string has more space to move inside the grommet, which leads to more snapback. Also, the fact that you can swing it quicker makes for a more whippy feel, which lends itself more towards that windshield wiper motion, which is the easiest way to generate spin. Finally, that higher launch angle means that you kind of have to generate more spin to control the racket. With the Percept, you can really punch through the ball on contact. With the Blade, you definitely need to brush up on it a little bit more. The one big thing that takes away from spin on the Blade is that mushy feel. When it comes to string snapback, that mushiness makes it feel like the string bed is a little bit sticky, so you get to a point where you feel like your spin potential is almost capped. Because the Percept is more crisp, it doesn't really have that same stickiness, so you'll never really get to a point where you feel like you're bottoming out your string movement. The other thing is, the isometric head shape means that you have longer main strings. The mains account for most of your racket spin potential, and because they're longer, they end up moving more than you would expect. So again, it's really close between the two. Honestly, I can't really pick a winner, but we are talking about two control rackets that are very, very good at helping generate spin, which is part of the reason why they're so popular. Well, the Blade is already super popular. The Percept, I just assume it will be, because, yeah, it's a good racket. 
Explaining who these rackets are for is going to be kind of funny because comparing them head to head like this, I've made them out to be so different. But the reality is they're really not all that different at all and they're kind of made for the same type of player. Yeah, the blade's feel and control isn't as good as the Percepts, but it's still better than 90% of the rackets out there. Yeah, the Percept stability might not be as good in stock form, but this technology is still working wonders on the Percept because you can play it at a pretty low swing weight, which wasn't true about the last V-Core Pro 97 and isn't true about a lot of other control rackets. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that both these rackets are elite modern control rackets. They're fantastic for control, but also very good at a lot of other things, and they're not that difficult to use. It's basically just going to be a question as to which one you get used to first, because once you do, you'll be dialed in. I do still think the Percept 97 is made for a slightly more advanced player. It's a little bit harder to swing and gives you less for free, and advanced players will really appreciate that fantastic feel and control it has. The Blade to me is another one of those kind of magic rackets. The fact that it's totally playable at 305 grams with a 315 swing weight is kind of insane because it means that you can swing it like a pure drive with pretty much all of the control and feedback of a proper player stick. Because of that, the Blade will be more popular, it just will, but the Percept does provide you with a more classic experience and there's definitely a market for that, it's just a little bit smaller. I also just briefly wanted to touch on comfort because I know it's very important to a lot of people. I do have to say that the fact that they took out vibration dampening mesh from the Percept means that it is slightly less comfortable than the last V-Core Pro 97. It's not uncomfortable, I just wouldn't go string in this thing with Alu Power at 73 pounds. The blade is a pillow. Honestly, you'll never feel discomfort with this thing. That mushiness absorbs pretty much any bad vibration. So yeah, it's a more comfortable racket than the Percept. But anyways, that is going to be the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Remember that if you do want to demo the Percept or the blade, you can come visit us in store or you can check them out online at racketsandrunners.ca.